Hello out there. This is Mike McCormick. Appreciate you uh, joining us today as we're going to celebrate the 45th anniversary of Jaws 2. And uh, a few months ago, I made a, a phone call to someone I, I did not know, uh, Gene Coulter, uh, a, a very popular trailblazing stunt performer. And uh, it was one of the first videos I, I really invested in this channel that you're watching. And I had such a wonderful time talking to Gene. When we've gone on to become very good friends, and I've been pestering her the past uh, few months. I'm like, you got to come back on the channel and do a Jaws 2 commentary with me uh, to, again, celebrate the 45th anniversary of Jaws 2. And I'm so happy to say Gene has agreed to do so. So, Gene, how are you doing today? Are you ready to watch Jaws 2 with me? I'm fantastic, yes, of course. Of course, it's always exciting. <laughs> uh, I could I couldn't tell you how many times I've seen this movie, and uh, of course you always have to watch your iconic scene. And I know you're involved for months in the uh, preparation of your scene, and you've got a lot of great stories to share with us. And uh, we'll try to go back in time and see what you can share with us about your experience making the movie. And I hope this is just a great memento for you and any fans out there that uh, that love this movie. Uh, I think it's a, a great popcorn film. It was very successful when it came out. I'm sure it's still making a lot of bucks for Universal as they prepare their 4K uh, presentation of the movie uh, that I think is going to be out over the summer. And uh, so hopefully, uh, you know, while this might not be on the uh, special features, we're going we're gonna to watch Jaws today, Jaws 2. So we've got our videos uh, queued up right at the beginning of the Universal logo. So it's right when the stars are starting to fade in as the Universal logo comes in. So we'll give you a moment to get your, your DVDs ready and pause right when those stars are showing on the Universal logo. And then uh, if you want to give us a pause the video, get yourself set up, come back. We'll count down and get the movie started. So, Gene, have you seen Jaws 2 uh, recently, or how long has it been since you've seen Jaws 2? Oh, quite a while, really. Once in a while, I'll turn on a movie channel, and it'll be there, and I kind of watch it for a minute and then click it off. But, you know, it it was always exciting. It, it's crazy. It's just one of those shows that you like to watch over and over because it is exciting. And the music, of course, is great. Uh, the actors were awesome. So it, it's a good film, and everybody keeps liking it. It drives me crazy because I thought it would just go away like all the other movies I worked on, you know, and people don't have that much interest. But Jaws 2 is popular every year. It's crazy. I get fan mail, and it's fun to, you know, have people remember that. So um, I was very lucky and very fortunate to work on this show because it turned out to be probably one of the biggest movies I did work on, you know, through my career. Sure. sure. Well, you worked on quite a few. You're, you, you've been in quite a few famous movies. We'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll uh, remind folks of some of your great stunts. Uh, but uh, uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and get the movie started. If you got your remote ready, Gene, I'm going to count down. Yeah. Three, two, okay. one. We're going to hit uh, play at one. And everybody watching, get your remotes ready. Here we go. The start of the Universal logo. Here we go. Three, two, one. And here we go, fading in. So I remember seeing this when I was four years old. Oh, my I gosh. Walking, I walked through the, the double doors, um, and they had a giant cardboard jaws over the door. <laughs> and like you were walking into his mouth. Uh, uh -huh. And there was so much promotion and stuff. You, I don't, you know, I don't know what the department stores we were going to then, but uh, they had Jaws two coloring books, Jaws two trading cards, posters, uh, all sorts of stuff. Lunch pails. Uh, <laughs> they had it all, and uh, I, know. I, I had it all. <laughs> Crazy. Um, I mean, do, do you remember like just how? popular the movie was and how hyped up it was when it came out or had you just moved on after you worked on the film for me i just moved on i just really never watched my work 
I was too busy and just didn't have time. So for me, it wasn't that big a deal, you know, although everybody would talk about it all the time. I didn't see the big deal about it. But when I watched it, it was exciting. You know, it turned out to be good because when I was doing it, sometimes I laughed when I was supposed to be crying. So it was crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, let's see. Well, I, I kind of like uh, the, the, this this opening to Jaws too. It's very different from the original Jaws, and kind of ethereal with this new kind of John Williams theme with the harp, um, the beautiful red Jaws two logo. You know, Jaws was the fir- Jaws two was the first movie to ever feature the number two in its title. Uh, it was usually uh, Roman numerals that people were using. Jaws two is the first movie to have that number two in the in the title. Boy, they've broken, they've done that plenty of times since in other movies, other franchises. Wow, that's interesting. But sequels were not, you know, really in vogue when this came out. Uh, well, and they really usually feel... weren't that great either. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They usually weren't that great. They were a little bit disappointing at times. Now. As we're, we're we're starting here, it looks like we're going to have our first attack. The two scuba divers here. Um, were you? Do you recall any of the? Uh, now I believe there was another incarnation of Jaws two that was that had started, and then they it was going to be directed originally by John Hancock. Uh, it was going to be kind of a darker film. Were, do you recall being involved with the movie at that point? Or, or no, you know, uh-uh. involved in film? You know, sure. Not not involved at all with that. No. That's interesting. Uh, had, had you ever heard of that, or were you aware that there was like I, production trouble? After I started working on it, yeah, I I did know that the director was no longer doing the directing, and um, I I had known Jano Swartz from Universal, so I did know him. Um, but when I went on the interview. To me, it was no big deal, although 500 girls tried out for it. I never thought I'd get it. I just went in and, and read for Verna Fields and thought for sure I wouldn't get it because I was so loud and I did a crying scene and a yelling scene. I thought for sure they'd kick me out of the office, but <laughs> it worked out okay. She was so nice to me and made me feel so comfortable. So for me, it wasn't hard to do. I, I never thought I was a good actress. Not like my sister, but it turned out to be okay for me, you know. So sure, um, sure. That, that that sounds interesting, though. So, so you had like a screen test, or, or, or um, yes. Well, actually, it was just a reading, and an I went in, and yes, for the audition. And she told me that you know they had gone all over the world to find somebody and interviewed a lot of five hundred girls at least. So I was kind of you know kind of shocked and I thought oh for sure I'm not going to get it <laughs> you know I, I never thought I'd get it um, it's do you, crazy do you, I'm sorry do you, do you remember like what they said to you or, or what they had like did they give you a premise to respond to you said you were screaming and what not I had the two pages you know of script so uh, I read it and I kind of knew what they were looking for and basically it was yelling, screaming and scared and, um, you know, so I, I tried to do that in the office and, and I was loud. I'm sure they heard me all down the halls. So oh, I just thought, well, heck, I'll go for it and see what happens. <laughs> so <laughs> I did. <laughs> Miss Loudmouth <laughs> screaming and yelling. So. Um, I walked out thinking, oh, I'll, I'll never get it. You know, I'll never get it. But how, how did you get okay. yourself work to do it? Did you like think about a bad date or something? What? what? No, not what? really. Not really. I just, um, I just, just realized I had to look frightened and scared and had to yell and cry and and do all of those emotions. So luckily, I was just, I didn't have a problem doing it. Right. So, um, well, um, as we're watching the movie here, we've got Roy uh, Scheider entering in the uh, Holiday Inn. Uh, yeah. Gary. Um, 
now this I think this opening scene by the pool was filmed at the actual Holiday Inn that you guys were lodging at uh, in the crew. Yes. Um, Yes, it's the dome. It was a holiday dome, and it had two pools, one inside and one out. And we worked inside on on that one, the opening of the movie. Nice. I, I think I heard, I think it was eventually uh, destroyed by a hurricane or something. Yeah, that's what I heard. It was fantastic staying there, though. We stayed there for quite a long time. It even snowed there when I was working. But um, it was oh, wow. a great place to to work and to, you know, in the morning you just go and your work is right there. So it wasn't a long ways to go to work. It was great. Had breakfast in the morning at the restaurant and went off to work. So, And we came home and we could do all sorts of things, swim in the pools. And they had jacuzzis and saunas and everything for it. So it was really wonderful. Now, did you did you hang out with any uh, any other uh, cast members, any of the, the, oh, the yeah. teenagers you know, that were in the movie? Um, no, not really. I kind of hung out with Christine Freeman, the girl who was a water skier in the movie. Um, we had a lot of fun together, so I kind of hung out with her. We'd lay out in the sun, and we'd go. And a lot of the uh, stunt people, I did hang out with some of the stunt people, um, and we'd go at night to the uh, jacuzzi and in the sauna and, and just, you know, did that before we went to bed. So um, it was what, pretty uh, nice. <laughs> I said, you guys sound, sound like you're living it up a little bit. Uh, oh, not really. You know, we didn't have much time. When you're working, you're working hard and you're working long hours and you're really tired by the time you come home, you know, so you're lucky to get dinner and and if i went in the jacuzzi and stuff it was really helpful you know so but no we didn't have a lot of time to play around you work six days a week when you're on location it's you know sure sure. now uh christine uh freeman the the water skier do you remember remember anything in particular about her Uh, any stories you could share she also a stunt person she was, no, 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 she wasn't. She was studying to become a nurse, which she did become an RN. And uh, she was a, a water skier who'd won a lot of titles with her water skiing. So that's why they chose her. And um, she was perfect. She was perfect for it. Very sweet. We had so much fun together. She was just really nice. And, um, you know, we worked long hours together. So it was great. I really enjoyed being able to work with her. And she went on not in the movie business. She went on to become an RN, which is, is awesome, you know. Sure, yeah. Now, um, how long were you lodged at that Holiday Inn? How long were you on set? Oh, boy. Oh, months, months. I, In total, I worked about six months on the movie. Although it was split up, I I worked in Florida the longest time, and then when I came back, I went to Catalina and worked there uh, on the shot where the shark goes into the boat. So we mm-hmm. shot that in Catalina. So. Um, oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Um, yeah, I yeah. don't know why they did that. If they missed missed some scenes that they thought should be in the movie, but we did do that after I came back to California. We did do that from Florida. So over that six months, were you was there just a lot of work in planning the stunts and uh, Not, coordinating everything? No, or? Um, I, I didn't have a long time. I uh, investigated how I would do the firework with special effects, and um, that That only took a few days, you know, whereas I wanted to get a wetsuit and maybe wear the wetsuit and they sprayed it nude. Uh, There's certain things I wanted to, um, I wanted to have my Nomax and I I needed my hair sprayed, you know, and we used a wig on some of the shots, but it was close up on my face. So a lot of times we couldn't use the wig. And when I did the full fire burn on my back and stuff, I couldn't use a wig we just sprayed sprayed everything with uh, fire retardant, 
and uh, that's when I did the the fire burn scene. But um, it was uh, different because we weren't sure what was going to happen. I knew I could be lit on fire for only a certain amount of seconds you know, because it got so hot and all I had on was no max in my clothes. Well, the clothes burned off right away. We didn't have the uh, gel to use and, and things that they have now. We didn't have that. So uh, it was interesting and it, it worked out good. I I was steamed a couple of times from the fire on me, but I really didn't get burnt bad at all. So it worked out good. I was surprised, too, because you'd think when they put that barbecue bar with all the fire coming out of the next year back, you would really, you know, get hot right away. It, it wasn't too bad. So we just had enough time to, to shoot it, you know, and, it, and we'd go in and just shoot for a few seconds, actually, you know, when the fire lit me up and everything, and, and then we'd cut and start over. Um, so it worked out really well for for the conditions we had. Yeah, I think in our in our past interview, and if and if you're listening and, and you're not familiar with this uh, past interview, Gene and I I did, please uh, check uh, my video history. Uh, we did a good hour and a half long, uh, kind of a little mini documentary about Gene's life. So. Uh, be sure and check that out. She gives you some more detail on, on JAWS 2 in case we don't cover everything today. But uh, uh, in that uh, conversation we had previously, you had mentioned that you were set on fire and you would actually jump in the ocean to put yourself out. Is, is that right? Well, yeah, that was my getaway. You know, that's what I planned. If if I started burning bad, then I would just jump into the water because the boats all – Nobody could be close to me because of shooting the scene. We had big barges, but they were a long ways away. And even the little boats and the guys, special effects guys, they couldn't be close to me or, or they would be seen in the scene. So I didn't really have a, a, a lot of uh, alternatives but to go into the water if I start burning bad. So it, it worked. luckily it worked great. You know, I was just lucky it, it worked. You try things, and sometimes they don't work, you know. But this did, so it was good. <laughs> well, it certainly did work. And um, here we're still, you know, getting getting to know our, our teenage cast. You know, you know. I don't know if you have, – have you seen, like, movies like Halloween, you know, with Michael not, Mon- Jamie Lee Curtis? You know, Halloween no, or not really. Friday the 13th? The, the no. Movies, like, those, those movies are popularly called flasher movies, and oh. to me, I I always thought Jaws two was the first flasher movie because basically, you know, those movies I mentioned are they have like a a masked killer that's you know terrorizing teenagers either at summer camp or you know babysitting <laughs> or whatnot, and uh-huh. this movie actually predates that. And so, really, we should give Carl Gottlieb credit for creating this uh, this genre. Of course, Halloween was probably being filmed when this was, uh, you know, being made as well or in production. But uh, but anyway, Jaws two is really the precursor to that to that genre of film. Um, oh, but uh, huh. but uh, I, I mean, Jaws two, you can just smell the popcorn and the coke as you watch it. it it's just <laughs> such a it's just such a fun, like, summer movie. It's, uh, uh-huh. and, it, and I remember it just being well regarded. Um, you know, Jaws, Jaws 2 was kind of like Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back. You know, it was those mm-hmm. were quality movies with sequels, blockbusters. And, sure. uh, uh, you know, I know some people don't re- regard the sequels that came after uh, that well, but, uh, but Jaws and Jaws 2 were, you know, top shelf, you know, movies coming from, from Universal at that time. Um, well, Brian it Shire. is quite amazing that it's lasted this long. I don't ever see it stopping, though. That's what's so crazy. Because every year I get fan mail, and it's 45 years old. It's it's crazy. But, you know, it, it's a real thing. Sharks are real. And it's something that you go into the water and, and you can especially here in California off the coast, get bitten. So um, 
I think it's something mm-hmm. that's real, and, and during the summer months, it, it's a, a good movie to watch, <laughs> it seems. Yeah, and, I mean, and, and you're part of, uh, you know, the way that this was made with the mechanical shark, practical effects, they don't do that now. Now it's sharks and tornadoes and Sharknado, and all, have you seen all these silly uh movies that come out nowadays it's like they're you know three-headed shark attacks <laughs> oh, it's crazy. they just with the computers they they do all the these silly you know concepts with, involving sharks but i mean when you get down to jaws to, to the original jaws series you know you're dealing with practical effects and uh-huh. uh i've always been fascinated by the the fact that it was a mechanical shark and and just the the ingenuity that went into you know, designing that and coordinating, you know, oh, it was amazing. Thoughts around all that. It's and when when you say that you were, you know, on set for a, six months for a basically a five ten minute sequence in the film, that doesn't right. surprise me because so much went into uh, these films. Oh and, yeah, uh, you know, it's crazy. Um, I spent days and days driving that boat into the sparklies. You know, really wanted to see the sparklies on camera because it was so glittery and lit up. And then when the shark fin pops up, it just, you know, is is just awe. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just, yeah. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's just really you're not expecting it. So it was That's great. Brilliant. It was the, cool. uh, the, the sparklies. Uh, was that, was, right. was that Geno? work talking about that? Yes, or? he said, Gene, he said, go into the sparklies. He said, into the sparklies. Well, what he didn't realize was I couldn't see the sparklies. He's on shore. I'm in the boat, and I couldn't <laughs> see the sparklies. So <laughs> we spent days and days driving into the sparklies, and I figured that if I wasn't in the sparklies, you know was going to tell me. So <laughs> it here. all worked. And there you it are was, in the sparklies. Um, here, 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 of course, is your iconic scene. Um, beautifully shot. That, that, that's, you know. Yes, I think that's here. what he was reaching for. He wanted to get the beauty of the ocean and everything, too, you know, in the film. So I think he did a good job doing that. Yeah, yeah. There you are in the sparklies. <laughs> And what's so- funny is I, I was in that boat, and, you know, the uh, water's shallow in Florida, and I'm in that boat, and I'm on the, just really in the sand, and he just keep going into the sparklies, not realizing that the boat's dragging on the bottom of the ocean. I'm flooring it, <laughs> and I'm having oh, a hard time keeping up in the sparklies. <laughs> now, this house that the... Uh- the elderly lady is uh, watching you guys out there having the time of your life uh, before you get gobbled up. Um, was that a real house? Do you do you recall? No, that was a set. That was a set. You can't have homes that close to the to the water there. You know what I'm saying? It was a set. Looks good yeah, though, didn't thinking. it? It was beautiful. Hey, that'd be great if that if as long as that shoreline doesn't run. <laughs> Oh yeah, exactly. As long as no storms come in, <laughs> it must have been uh, some of Joe Al's uh, work. Um, the second unit director and uh, I believe set set designer for Jaws too. But here's this beaut this right here, the shot with the fin coming up, and that great hit of the music. What yeah. is, that is just so, that's terrifying right there. That looks so real. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I understand that they built some kind of uh, camera fixture that to, to be able to catch up with her skiing, to get that underwater shot of, of her skis. Do you recall any of that or know anything about no, that? I, no, because I wasn't involved in her scenes. Mm-hmm. So um, I didn't know, but no, I'm, I'm sure they had it all worked out, you know. It, it I mean, turned the, out great. That was awesome, the way they did it, I think. Okay, so they must have filmed that separately, the the, the shot of her skiing under from underwater. Done right. Separately. I mean, I okay. probably pulled her when when they were shooting underwater. 
I was probably the one that drove the boat, I'm sure. Um, and so if they just filmed the ski, I know you just saw the ski underwater. Um, I probably would have been, you know, pulling her at the time. Did they always um, plan her attack to be kind of sudden, like like it's like it is there, like or was I, I there ever a, so. a grander plan for the mechanical shark to be involved? No, I think that's what they planned for her. But okay. who knows? I wasn't involved in everything, you know, just just my scenes. So that's all I knew about. Um, well, here's your scene, and you're. We're picking up the ski here. Uh, uh-huh. You want to give the audience a Terry for us? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> Terry? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was funny. Terry, when we were go. shooting that with the, the, the shark, the shark didn't look real to me. It was crazy. In person, it did not look real. So... It was hard to follow through crying and screaming when it didn't look real. But, boy, when I saw it on film, it was unbelievably real. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and people always give your character a hard time about, you know, shooting the, pouring the gas on yourself. You're just trying to find something to throw at this thing that's attacking you. Uh, right. You don't think. Death. Yes. And, you do and, not uh, think when you're stressed like that. Yeah. You're too scared. You're kind of doing what Roy Scheider did at the end of Jaws. He grabbed a scuba tank. Luckily for him, it wasn't an open gas tank. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, and he shot it. You were trying to shoot it. And, uh, yeah, it just didn't work out. But, uh, man, what <laughs> thing? That, that big explosion, were you there for that? Did you see them pull that? No, uh-uh, I wasn't. No, wow. I wasn't. But, you know, people don't realize how heavy those gas can, cans are when they're full. You try to lift it over your head. I weighed 104 pounds. That gas can was heavy. It was full, and when I lifted it, it almost pulled me over, you know, because I was in a hurry anyway. So when I lifted it to throw, I almost didn't get it to the shark. So it was real. You know, it was a heavy, heavy object, and trying to lift it with water in it, basically, right. was, was very hard. Five gallons. Just try yeah. lifting a gas can, a metal gas can, with, loaded with, you know, fuel. It's heavy. Now, uh, as we discussed in your in your, your original interview, they basically anchored you out there uh, by yourself in the boat, and you literally had a 25-foot mechanical shark ramming into the boat again and again. And then you yes. hurt your ankle? Uh, yes, the boat picked up, and someone had moved the shark or the boat closer together, and when the shark hit the boat, it almost flipped over. It went all the way up. And I got my, my foot caught in one of the boards underneath, and I, I tore my knee up. So from then on, I, I worked with a cast on, and I had it cut, sawed on the outside, on the inside, so I could take it off during shooting. So that was, you know, took up a little bit of time, too, unfortunately. But, right. yeah, things, things happen you, you don't plan, you know. I mean, you're really tipping over in that boat. It's, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was something. Like I could have gone all the way over. I thought we were going to go all the way over. It was crazy. Yeah, it looks like um, uh, we're about to have another incident. Oh, actually, this is the, uh, the cable being pulled up. Um, so did you work? A lot with Geno Schwartz on 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 your scene, or was, did Joe Alves handle a lot of that um, in in the second unit? I worked with both, so um, you know, it was it was good because I knew both of them, and and it was great. Um, did the direction so. 
what tell us more about you know working with Geno. Uh what 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 do you remember uh if anything? <laughs> you know, he was ago. so darn nice to me and I just remember him always having the patience and everything. So for me that was great. He really didn't say much. Um I just kind of did my own thing and he went along with it, so I guess it was okay where he could, you know, put it all together and it worked for him, so. Um. Now, did you have to do a lot of takes of your scene, or did you guys pretty much nail it on the first take? Um, we did a couple of takes, I think, only because they want to make sure they get it, you know, so, and maybe have a different choice. So we shot it a couple of times. Usually when I do stunts, we try to do it just one time because if you do it a second time, you have more of a chance of being heard on it. But um, we always try to do everything one time. But in the movie, a big feature like that, they try to get all the film they can so they have a choice of what what they like best. And uh, sure. that's what they did. So... Um, a lot of things we couldn't shoot again, though, because once the boat's ruined, you know, you can't go fix the boat right away and take it out and reshoot it. So a lot of things, they just had to be stuck with what they got. And uh, obviously we've moved on from, 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 from your scene, but of course we want to hear, hear as much as we can since, we, you know, you were firsthand you know, a part of the, the this iconic scene. Can you remember, you know, what was your impression of uh, the first time you saw the mechanical shark? What What did you think? Well, like I said before, I almost started laughing because it didn't look real. The eye didn't look real. The shark didn't look real. I didn't really have a lot to work with it to scare me. <laughs> But, you know, sharks don't look real in, in the oceans and things. They don't look real when you're up close. So um, it, it just was out of water, and when it was on the boat, it just didn't look real. So it, it was different. It was different. What can I say, you know? <laughs> I had so to be it... scared to death, and uh, it didn't give me a lot to be a, afraid of. <laughs> so yeah. Was it, was and I'm not a movie? great actress. <laughs> well, you did great in your in Jaws too. Um, <laughs> yeah, did thank you. Uh, <laughs> did you? Uh, uh, did the shark like move in fits and starts, or was it? Was there a continual movement, or? Um, no, it was just you know one movement. It came into the boat, hit the boat, so um, it wasn't uh, a lot of the movement you see coming to the boat. I didn't see that. They they filmed that separately, and that really looked real. To me, yeah. it was just awesome looking. It was scary, so that looked real. The shark fin looked real. When the sh I saw, you know, when I was driving the boat, the shark fin, of course, I could see it when they brought it up. It did look real. It was It was scary. So... From from your perspective, driving that boat, you remember like looking back and seeing oh, yeah. that shark fin back there. Uh huh. I remember, I was doing a lot of things. I was driving the boat. I was pulling the water skier. So I had to be aware of where everything was, and um, you know, to make it all work and not to mess up. So yeah, I was watching everything. So you kind of you you remember kind of looking back, going, "That's scary." <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah. Wow. I'm thinking, good thing it's not real, because <laughs> that little boat was little. <laughs> Do you remember like how they had the fin, like how they were propelling that? Was it being uh, pulled by a boat as well, or? or yes, was it, yes, it was, was it on like on cables, on cables underwater, and then the boat was way way up in front of us. So, um, and they had they had a cable on the back end of it too, of course. So it wouldn't, you know, go back and forth or move that much. It would just come up. 
It was awesome was, the way they did it. Was it? And it was just the fin part, right? Like it, yes. it wasn't like yes. old. No, it was not. Just the fin. Wow. So it, just it worked right. perfect. It worked perfect. And how how far did you guys like have to film like the shark chasing you? Did you have like was it just a few feet? And then they'd say, "Okay, do it again." And you just keep getting close well, shots. Of, right. Most everything that I did was close up shots. Long distance shots. I don't know. Other than you okay. know the one with the fin coming up. Right. Wow. <laughs> well, um, here we've got Roy Scheider starting to figure out. We've got another shark. Um, now, had you seen the original Jaws? Um, yes, I had. Yes. Before it you was... even knew anything about Jaws too. Yes. Did you... So you like went to the movies and saw it, it's like everybody else. Oh, did. I don't. I don't remember how I saw it. Um, probably. Um, but I remember it was really a good film. It was really good. Very scary. Very, a little bit gory for me. Um, I'm, you know, but it, it was scary, you know. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, but, uh, it had to have been something the day, you know, you got the job. What, what was, what was it like when they called you to say you, you got, you got the role? You're going to be in. Well, they called me up and they said, can you be on the plane tomorrow morning at 7 a.m.? I said, what? <laughs> I said, what? I said, no. <laughs> I have two children. I need a day's notice. So um, I went, of course, the next day, though. But that was, you know, I had to, I had horses and children and I had to get everything and just leave. So it was crazy the, what, how it happened. And I still, even getting on the plane, I said to myself, I can't believe I got the show. Out of all the girls they interviewed, I got the show. <laughs> so that was, you know, nice, a nice thing to happen. But again, it sure. was so darn fast. I had a lot to do. I, I don't think I slept that first night. I had so much to do before I got on the plane, you know, to work. So, and leaving for a while is hard with when you have kids. Yeah. So, you you mentioned uh, Verna Fields was the one that or, uh, that that cast you basically. Yes. Yes. And what was. Now, she was heavily involved in the editing of Jaws, and she had moved on to be a pretty big, important person at Universal at that time. Uh, do you recall anything about her? How was she? Oh, you know what? I just remember her being so nice to me. And, you know, when you go on those interviews, you always get nervous and not sure of what's going to happen. So I was very nervous. I was young and didn't know any better. And she just made me feel like I was at home, and she was great. I couldn't have asked for anybody better, honest to goodness. I think she liked me, and um, once I did the scene and everything, she seemed really happy. And I just, I really liked her. I wished I could have said hello to her again, you know. I, I wished I could have talked to her again and see yeah. if she was happy with everything, you know. I I got to know David Brown and Helen Gurley Brown, his his wife, very well on the on the film. They took a liking to me and I went out to dinner with them a lot and we talked a lot about different things. But he said, you know, he said the the scene he says, your scene is that what poster that we promoted the whole movie with so he says I want you to know that and I said well I said that's awesome so he was real proud of that poster that showed our scene on it so our scene was always poster. supposed to be a, a big scene in the movie yeah that's a great poster I, when I was four years old I remember getting that poster 
and I hung it on my wall. And my mother uh, was a little on the conservative side <laughs> and came in and oh, the bikini <laughs> into a one piece. Oh, uh, oh my. Yeah. Did you um, have nightmares? <laughs> Oh no no. Um, well, oh, good. I, I I did think the first time I saw the original Jaws, um, I, I hid under. I, I remember being at the movie theater. I was way too young to go. My parents took me to see all sorts of crazy stuff. That's why I'm um. doing what I'm doing now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, now, now now here you just made another appearance here as uh, you, the the burnt. Oh, the dead body. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you didn't have anything to do with that, did you? No. <laughs> uh, uh, like a cast or anything, or I don't know. Uh, no. I thought I'd ask, make sure we're covering everything. But uh, yeah, yeah. You made another uh, made another appearance in the movie. <laughs> a dead <laughs> appearance, a burnt <laughs> appearance, <laughs> and it's so funny because they have. They have my whole figure showing on that. You'd think I'd be burned half off. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah, it, the shark didn't even it, bother it's eating It's scary you. when the dead body pops out, you know? It is. Now, I don't remember that scaring <laughs> me. But yeah. yeah. And, when, when, and, and also just having Roy Scheider going out into the ocean, you know, yeah. in uniform to get it. You just, yeah. like, they start jostling. It's like, okay. Something's going to happen here. And, He's um, so good. Oh, I love Roy Scheider movies. I mean, he and I, I got to know him a little bit uh, before he uh-huh. passed, uh, and uh, got to chat with him a little bit. And he was very, very classy guy. Um, yes, he was. You know what I remember all the time is him in his bikini with a newspaper under his arm, going out to sit in the sun. He loved the sun. Loved the sun. And that's what he did. Every second he was off, he'd be out at the beach. It was gorgeous there with the white sand and the turquoise water, of course. So we had the best of two worlds. We could lay out in the sun and and then go to work. It was great. And that's what he did a lot is he was out in his little bikini sitting in the sun, loving it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, he 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 figured out how to do it. I guess uh, I think I think he picked that that habit up on the first film, and he knew what to expect. He knew going into Jaws too that there'd be all sorts of technical uh, hang-ups and uh, right. delays, whatnot. So, gee, what are you gonna do? Well, I'll just go. Right I know. Out in the sun. True. I think true. I think they actually complained that he laid out in the sun too much. That they had to kind of change the <laughs> clock a little bit. So. Yeah, I think his so color tan. changed. Right, too tan. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could tan like that. I'd I'd, I'd be a, a lobster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he like he that. got so dark. He did. He got uh, dark. But apparently, he 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 loved to sunbathe through, throughout his the rest of his life. He did it. Uh huh. Um, but uh, I enjoy uh, that too. It's not right, I know, but. I've been in the sun all my life. I lived, you know, in California on the beach. So all my life I've laid in the sun and still do to this day. Uh, It just feels so good. It just, it's like a healing. It's crazy. But I feel so, the pain just pulled out of my bones. It's crazy. So I do enjoy the sun a lot, but I always wear, you know, some type of cream so I don't get burned. But, sure. Um, yeah, it's a, it's something I shouldn't do, but I'll I'll probably never stop, especially at my age now. <laughs> well, you know, you get your vitamin D, you know. <laughs> it, absolutely, um, there's some good things to it. Can't all be bad. Yeah, everything's bad for you. I know. Um, <laughs> so, um, as far as um. Roy Scheider. They make a big deal. People make documentaries and whatnot. They always make it whenever they cover Jaws 2, they always say, boy, Scheider, he did not want to make Jaws 2. Um, and I guess, you know, he, he saw like Richard Dreyfus go on to do The Goodbye Girl and win an Oscar in 77, you know, and uh, 
you know, Robert Shaw go on to make Black Sunday with John Frankenheimer. And uh, I guess uh, Scheider kind of felt, you know, left behind with the uh, with the shark having to go through go through the horror of filming a, a, a movie relying on a mechanical shark again. But apparently he was very hesitant to, to do Jaws to. But uh, I, I just don't see any evidence of it. Or if 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 he did do that, maybe he did it just so it helped his performance. Because I th- I find him to be really believable and intense in Jaws too. Uh, did you see any I evidence agree. of that? Or was he? Sounds like he, he seemed pretty cool. From no, I agree. I think the first film they had so much trouble work, working in the water is the worst. But I think the first film, they had so many problems that he probably got discouraged and it took too long. And But then Jaws 2, they kind of worked out the kinks with the shark and everything. So I think things moved along very nicely, and I think he was a little bit happier with that. And I, I thought he was happy on the film. He enjoyed working, and, and that showed. So... I don't know. I, I think everything was fine with him when he started working. It was a nice set, nice people to work with, too. Everybody, the the directors, the uh, producers, they all were classy and nice people. There was no yelling on our set. There was just really, everyone worked together like a family. It was more the old Hollywood movies that, you made, you know, everybody kind of worked together as a family, and that's how that movie was. Jaws 2, it was wonderful to work on that movie. I really, I really loved it. I was very fortunate to work on it. And the people were all so nice. Yeah, I mean, I guess that speaks well uh, for the producers as well. Uh, uh, which you oh, they were uh, great. David Brown, R- Richard Zanuck. Yeah. They knew they were going to make their money back on this. So I guess they, they didn't worry so much about the budget. But uh, uh, it seemed like it, it it was a difficult start to the movie. But once uh, uh, Jeno Schwartz got involved, I mean, it sounds like he was just kind of quietly, uh, steadily uh, getting this movie made. Normally you would think he'd be under a lot of pressure just because of all the money at stake. Uh, right. His personality isn't, though. To me, he's not high strung. He's just really yeah. kind of takes everything as it comes. So I think that worked for him. And I thought he did an awesome job. Like I said, I had known him before at Universal. Just a nice man, you know, not not loud, uh, not uh, just really easy to work with. So it was great. And so you stayed clear of all these these teenagers running around. I'm sure they were partying and having a good time making this movie. Yeah, they they were. Yeah, they they weren't even around when I was working. Um, our scenes are different, and they were mostly, I believe, up north at Martha's Vineyard. I think that's where they did all their work, because uh, I didn't see them where I where I was working. You know, our scene was really specifically just us just Christine and myself so and they had all the barges and everything out in the ocean for for that scene so I think they were maybe focusing on your scene while they were figuring out the the change of course with the direction and and maybe the story Um, that's probably why you didn't see a lot of those those other Uh, mm -hmm. they were probably getting the script together and figuring out their direction forward, but they spent a lot of time focusing on your scene, which obviously paid off making it as memorable and thrilling as it is. I know I was surprised David Brown said so much about it. He said, you know, it's your scene. It's an iconic scene. He said, the posters all about your scene were promoting the whole movie on your scene. So I guess they really thought it was going to be special. I mean, I hope I made it work for them. You know, it's kind of hard to be put in that position where, you know, <laughs> it's your scene. You better do a good job or else. <laughs> you know oh, what I'm saying? And I hope, I hope people, um, 
I hope people, hopefully you're enjoying this. Uh, uh, Jean's always a treat. She's got all these great stories. But leave us a comment. Let, let Jean know, you know, just how much you enjoyed this scene and, and let her know how much you, you appreciate her setting herself on fire, throwing <laughs> herself in front of a 25-foot mechanical shark. Uh, I'm sure she'd love to hear from you and uh, your memories of, of watching Jaws too. But, uh, oh, here's the Roy, Roy's flip out scene on the beach uh, where he thinks he's. Oh, yes. The shark. I know it's hard to talk to me and watch this at the same time, but. Uh, it's also believable, though, you know, because when you've had experience with a shark before, it's also believable. You don't want anybody else hurt again, you know? So I think he did such a fantastic job in the movie, really. He's, he was yeah. just awesome. He's totally believable. Um, getting roped into the movie. Um, I always think he's going to shoot that kid. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, I mean, he's he, he's just so uh, believable. Like, and you can see, you know, it's kind of like, you know, you you know something's out there. You know something's going to go. It's like when you know something's going to go wrong and no one believes you. And he just right. really pulls up so well in his performance. And like you would never mm-hmm. know. If, if he did not want to make this movie, you would never know it. Um, no. He was, he was so professional, though. You know, he was just a pro. And so you wouldn't know it because he would never let that side of him out, I don't think. And um, Lorraine Gary, uh, any memories of of her? Um, I really didn't work with her, so I didn't know her. She She was the bound. She was um, the I believe uh, Sid Sheinberg. uh, She was married to him at the time, and I believe they stayed married till his passing. Uh, But. yeah, she was uh, she was married to uh, the boss of Universal at the time. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> but she did a good <laughs> job. Nice. She did a real good nah. job. She fit right yeah, in that part, really. You know, definitely a good, definitely a good actress, and a believable yeah. actress. Um, yeah. I think a lot of us. She reminds us of her uh, mothers in the seventies, and I know that that outfit that you're wearing. I believe everybody's mother had that outfit. What was the the, the bandana? The plaid, plaid, the plaid shirt. Plaid, yeah. And the yeah. beige pants. <laughs> yeah, was, it was kind of hokey. <laughs> I mean, I would be wearing a bathing suit usually when I'm in a boat, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You had to wear all those clothes because you probably, because of the fire and the... Yeah, the I'd hate to do it not... In a bathing suit, <laughs> that would be that hard. Been, that would have been something. That shot where the shark it, comes up behind you on the boat would have had some new meaning. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but I always thought that was a scary shot of him coming up at you from behind like that. That was very well done. Yes, there was a lot of thought, and they really did a good job on it. They really did. And do you remember uh, Joe Al at all? Uh, not too much, no, because he, he worked on his own, you know, probably at the studio and everything, so not too much. Yeah, I think I just I just remember seeing some photos of, of you and you and him. I, I met him. He he went on to direct Jaws 3. And I'd oh, yes. Jaws 3 with Joe Al and have a fun talk about Jaws 3 if you're out there, Joe. Um it's that's also a fun popcorn movie. I don't I don't know. Everybody likes to be crazy. I just like to have fun watching movies and uh, speaking of what 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 are some of your favorite movies or anything that, that you oh, like? Oh some of my favorite movies. I, I loved Godfather. I love Avatar. Um you know, I, I just like different things. I'm not uh stuck on one 
thing. I like different movies. So um, the Avatar movie was so different and so wild, so beautiful. The whole idea of the movie, I I liked a lot. So, and of course, the Godfather series was excellent. So oh, yeah. I'm really not a person that goes to movies because I've always worked and not had time. So. I'm not one that sits and watches, you know, five hours a day at TV or anything. I I read a lot of books instead of watching TV. So, <laughs> being raised in the movie business, you don't really do it all. You know, you just, I don't know. It's not that I don't enjoy it. It's just that I've I've seen a lot, so... You, you know a lot of the, the experience. You know a lot of the behind the scenes stuff and the good and bad. Oh, and oh. That oh yeah, oh yes. My little sister was a a child star starting at three years old. So, and I used to go to work with her. And my father was already at Warner Brothers. So I went to work with him at times. So. No, I, I grew up, I really grew up in the movie business, you know. I started uh, doing stunts in 67, I believe, really before that because I didn't have my A card. I worked on my E card, and they would call it hazardous work until one day a couple of stunt guys came to me and said, you can't be doing that. And I said, why not? He said, because you should be working on your A card. You get more money and residuals. And you're doing a dangerous work. And so they said, we'll keep you working if you don't ever work on your e-card again. I said, okay. And it worked. I did I did get a lot of work. It just snowballed. So that worked for me. I was little, though, and they didn't have a lot of small women that did stunts in the movie business. They were all, you know, bigger than me. So I I worked in really well with you know, going on to Charlie's Angels and some of the things that, that I did, heart to heart. Uh, the girls were thin, and, and I worked well doubling them. So that worked for me. Sure did. Yeah. Sure did. I knew a, lo- a lot of things in the movie business. Mm-hmm. Worked with a lot of people, knew a lot of people. Just grew up in it, you know. So it wasn't it wasn't anything special to me. It was just I'm going to work and that's it. It's just a job, you know. Oh, this is so good right here. I'm telling you, I'm telling everyone at this table that's a shark. <laughs> oh, Rory is pissed off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if he didn't want to make the movie, he put it out in, in that, that acting right there. Yeah. Uh, yes. Really good stuff. So, uh, you know, you, you mentioned Charlie's Angels, just like, oh, that's, oh, you know, Charlie's Angels. Charlie's Angels. I mean, do you realize what a big deal that was in the 70s? Now, people still watch that show. I mean. Well, you know, when I was called for it, the first, the pilot, I did the pilot and I doubled all three girls in it. It was crazy. I was taking off a wig and putting on different clothes every other hour. It was, it was so fast and furious and you never have any idea that anything's going to go, you know, and it, it just took off. It, it did so well. Um, so yeah, I wasn't under contract to them, but I did, you know, most of the, the shows, um, but I went on to do other things other than just staying on Charlie's. I also did the heart to heart TV series, doubling Stephanie Powers. Um, and if, unless they put you on contract, that was a huge one. (laughs) Heart to heart. That's a big show, but I remember Uh uh, my mom sister would always watch that one friday night i think it came on after uh it was on abc it came on after the hulk so i'd watch the hulk and then they'd watch um heart to heart oh fun i think yeah now those were all made at fox and i worked for aaron spelling so they just kept me working all the time which was great you know it was great 
And then um, you had done just prior to Jaws 2. Or did you know you were going to be involved with Jaws 2 when you were doing Airport 77? Not at all. Not at all. No. I, I just got the call to do the reading, and that's how I got Jaws 2. But no, on Airport 77, I was the one woman that Universal was going to give a chance to co-coordinate a big feature. It was the one feature that was made that a, a woman was going to co-coordinate. Well, co-coordinate, um, it didn't really turn out to be that way, even though I was doing an acting job on it and doubling the stars on it. Uh, the coordinating was left to me to call the people to double people, and that's all I got to do. Usually a coordinator would set up the stunts, and, you know, even though inside the plane, of course, I set up my own thing when the water comes down on us and when I double Lee Grant in the movie, um, I set up my own stunts then. But uh, other than that, I didn't really get to coordinate it, although it says I'm the co-coordinator. Um, I could have done a lot more. It would have been wonderful to be involved in a lot more of it. But anyway, the, the show kept me working, you know, doing the acting job and doing the stunt work and doubling everybody. It was really a busy show for me, so it was good. It was well, you great were, uh, with the great stars on, in it. And, yeah, and you were in it quite a bit. You were like, yep. uh, yeah, because I watched it before we did our – our first interview, and I was like, I was just looking for you, you know, to do a little stunt sequence. No, you're in the whole thing. I'm sitting I at the know. end of the movie. Did, did she survive? And you're getting on the life raft. You made it. <laughs> yeah. Long hours, man, on that one. That was a hard show. Working with water coming down on your life at it. It was a hard show. Oh, yeah, I bet. And that was, was that harder than Jaws? Um, to some extent, because all that water coming in on you takes its toll, you know, but yeah. not really. All, all the jobs are just jobs, you know, some are more dangerous than others, but, um, these were fine. These were fine. So, so anyone out there that isn't familiar with, uh, airport 77, listen to this as a premise, right? So there's this jumbo jet high-tech airliner owned by Jimmy Stewart. And uh, it's full of jewels and paintings, and they take their first initial, you know, flight, like the Titanic. And they're they're going over the Bermuda Triangle. And unfortunately, the couple of the pilots are jewel thieves. And so they decide to gas everybody, and they're going to steal – everything in the airplane and uh, unfortunately something goes wrong and the airplane ends up crashing in the Bermuda Triangle under the ocean and it sinks to the bottom of the sea and it's got a pressurized cabin so everybody's trapped underwater in a jumbo jet and there's a giant great white shark outside trying to <laughs> eat them up no wait that's <laughs> That's what I thought was going to happen, though, when I was watching, because I was so worried about oh, Jaws. Oh, really? Oh, no. <laughs> but, that would have ruined Jaws. <laughs> they'll probably make that now. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was, that was, and that movie was, that was a big deal. That was on, I remember watching that on network television, and going to school the next day, and all the kids were going, did you see that movie? Oh, With great. Gene Coulter? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Nobody knew who I was. <laughs> That's not true. That's funny. That's Gene Coulter from the lady that was, those two ladies at the airport. They all watched it. Oh, you mean Charlie's Angels? <laughs> you know, was, you just don't know. And, I guess and, when you're doing it, you just don't know. <laughs> well, you don't know. You do You do not know if it's going to be good or it's going to be terrible. You don't know. You just do the best you can do, and, and that's it, you know, and you move on. You just go on to the next job. But uh, boy, he's too, too drunk. 
Um, no, but I guess I, I, I guess you know. I don't know. How does it feel like I, I, when I posted that we were going to do a commentary? And I'm sorry, we're just running our mouths over the movie, but um, how does it feel to, to see all those people that excited about you know hearing your stories? It's got to feel good. I see you getting a lot of get, getting a lot of attention on uh, Facebook. It's got to feel good. Yeah, it's it's hard to believe, really, um, that I get so much fan mail. Still, it's just really hard to believe. You know, I mean, of course you're you're grateful for the recognition, but I don't think I'm anything special. I just think I tried to do a good job, and and some of my stunts were were good enough. You know, and some weren't. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nice, actually. You know, because people wait in line to try to get on Facebook and stuff. It's it's pretty nice compliment, really. You know, and to still get fan mail after 45 years, people say, well, we followed your, your work and we really enjoyed it. And that was pretty nice because really stunt work is just behind the scenes. You know, we're not the stars or anything like that. We're just the workers. So... For me, um, I never expected any uh, recognition for anything. So when I get it, it's it's kind of like you don't believe it. You know, it's just pretty nice. So of course, I'm very appreciative and very grateful for that. But uh, yeah, I mean, these movies, they a lot of us we see them as as children, and they they go on to spark their own creativity. I, I know I'm. I, I, I try to do, you know, music, and I've uh, worked on a few things, and um, I was in, inspired by the music I heard in these movies, John Williams, and oh um, yeah, and just the uh, imagination that that just it just sparks your imagination on so many so many levels, and like I remember there was uh, uh, a fan that we were both uh, friendly with. That, that unfortunately passed, but I want to honor the, the work he did. He was sending you all those beautiful uh, paintings of your scene. Oh, um, yeah. Frederico, Elaine. Yes. Uh, just, uh, I hope I'm saying his name correctly. but Yes. Uh, he was amazing, and I, I was in shock. He was so young when he passed. I, I don't know what he passed of, but his brother wrote me and said he's passed and I was just in shock because it was like every week he was coming up with a beautiful painting he did of me I I, I was so grateful he was such a nice man and so talented my gosh he's left me with so many of his beautiful art pieces and it's just unbelievable you know I, mm -hmm. it's just hard to realize he's gone just really hard but um I don't know. There was another guy named Lou, Lou Pisano. I, I, I yes, met. the writer. He was writing my book, and he passed at 38 years old. I mean, I just was in shock, so I haven't done anything. I mean, he was so nice, and he had the words. He knew how to write. He was a beautiful writer. And he passed, like, yeah. at 38. He had a heart he was, attack. I think he was... I'm not sure of his age. I think he was in his 40s or, or something. But but no, yeah, I he, think 38 uh, years old. He was very young. Good. But uh, but I, I'd met him at uh, the Jaws Fest in 2012, and I know I knew he was working on a book, and uh, he, he made a book with uh, Michael Smith, uh, I believe you're yeah. familiar with, who did yeah. a Jaws two book. But uh, yeah. But I, you know, I just want to mention him and, and, and Frederico and because these guys oh how obviously sweet they were so nice thank you for that admired your work. oh so. yes they were so nice to me I just you know it's hard to believe sometimes when people pass it's hard to believe so young but it's, but it's great to see it's great that you were able to see and that you've, you've been able to see and you continue to see um you know that people walk away from these things. You know what it might just seem like a job, but you're. That's the. Uh, I guess the. Uh, 
payoff uh, for for what you do and uh, doing these stunts and putting yourself in danger and putting up with all the studio politics and all that stuff is what you walk <laughs> away with is you actually inspired people to be creative and to draw and to write and make music oh. and to act and that's a great Thanks, thing. Thanks, Michael. That's so nice. That's so nice. I, I that's very nice of you. Thank you. I think the people that that were doing the artwork and in writing for me were so talented. I was lucky to have them as my friend, you know, and lucky that they felt I was worth painting and felt that I was worth writing a book about. So I was very grateful always. Well, I've certainly enjoyed uh, chatting with you, and you're so sweet. You sent me. I remember I was sitting here on New Year's New Year's Eve. By myself, have a boring New Year's Eve, just one of those where you go, well, next year I'm going to have a party. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I got this sweet uh, Happy New Year's message from you by, by text. I was like, good grief. Life can be so surreal. I've got <laughs> the, the lady of the boat texting me Happy New Year. Uh, it's kind of a... It was, it was you know, great, it's great. the simplest things that make people happy. Just yeah. remembering you, you know what I'm saying? It's just the thought that counts, and it, it can be so simple that it makes you feel so good. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. That's great. <laughs> I hope people are enjoying I – mean, I don't know, you're very easy to talk to. I, I just feel like I'm talking to uh, somebody I've known my whole life. I hope people yeah. are enjoying hearing you describe them. Oh, there's Jaws. Just, uh, <laughs> you know. It's always popping up here. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to do a, to get the commentary, but we're talking about all these good things. That, uh, anyway, uh, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's I'm, I'm happy to have you on the channel. I'm happy to have, you know, I hope people enjoy, you know, catching up with you and, and, and watch, watching the, watching what a lot of people consider one of their favorite movies. Oh, thanks, Michael. With you. Thanks so much. It's fun talking about it, you know, because I've been retired for quite a while, so uh, it, it's kind of fun talking about it. I I really do miss working. Uh, I don't miss the politics, of course, and I don't miss being blacklisted. <laughs> well, so is is there, you know. Jaws to aside, is there anything you'd like folks to know about your experience in Hollywood? What? Well, is there anything fair just, you want people to know? I think we're fortunate to grow up in the movie business and to work hard in it. I think we're lucky to have that chance for sure. Um, for me, I think I would have chosen something else probably. Although I'm I'm talented in a lot of things, I think I might have chosen a better thing because being blacklisted after 20 years is pretty hard to handle. But uh, all in all, it gave me a good life. I enjoyed every day at work. I had so much fun, and I worked with a lot of lovely, nice people. I work with some of the biggest stars Hollywood ever produced. So... Uh, for for me, I felt grateful, and I really am lucky to be alive because most of my dear friends are have passed because of doing stunt work. So, uh, no, I'm very grateful for my life and and what it's given me. And uh, I brought my children up into it too. They worked in it, so um, we're like the fourth generation. So we're we're lucky to be, you know, in the movie business and working. It's not easy. It's not an easy job for sure. And it's probably a lot easier just doing something else. <laughs> but it it is what it is and we were lucky to be in it. So um I feel I'm very fortunate fortunate to be alive for sure. And fortunate to have made so many friends through the years. So that's about it. <laughs> Yeah. About you know, you don't have to get into it, but like you, you, you basically dealt with like some kind of like some of that Harvey Weinstein kind of behavior. Oh I mean, yes, 
Absolutely. It was amazing to the extent that they follow you and make sure you don't work. I, I worked 200 days one year, and the next day I worked 12. So you know something happened, and and I heard that they all had a meeting. These guys had a meeting together. Of they were going to blacklist me, and if it went to court, they were going to all lie. And it, it just amazed me what people do, you know, because yeah. they don't. They're spoiled brats, and they don't get what they want, and so they're going to make somebody suffer for what? I lost everything. I lost my home. I lost my camera car business. I lost everything I ever worked for. So I don't think it's fair, and it's terrible for women or men to have to go through that. You know, I know it's a lot easier now, but in the 80s, it wasn't. You know, women were just better be on their toes and and stay away from people that aren't good people and you know it, it was a tough business to to walk the tightrope in is what I call it because I was a happy person I love people but don't get too close and don't be too friendly because they can take it a wrong way so I was always you know on my toes and and had a hard time in the business because um I just did it, it it was a hard, hard business to be in with the men and stuff. Most of them were so nice, but then there was the few that made it hard on you. So I'm sure men go through the same thing, but I well, mean, too. I mean, men, men, men have obstacles that, that they deal with, but, like, I'm sure, you know, when with you being a stunt performer, and I guess before – female stunt performers, it was really men in wigs, right? Doing the stunts? Yes. And, uh-huh. It sure so was. Kind of, yeah. You were, you were kind of paving the way and showing, hey, women, look here. We we can do this. Cut <laughs> jaws, too. <laughs> now, yep. look at that shark, shark. That is scary. Coming at the... Man. <laughs> I mean, it's so cool to know how they did that now, how they get that fin to cut through the water like that. It was um, amazing, yeah. The music, well, the music said it all, though, didn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. It's like this I mean, as soon was... as that music starts, your heart starts pumping, and you know what's coming. <laughs> like this, this music when she realizes that the the boat got tipped over because of a shark, and, and when she realizes, okay, he didn't just fall out of the boat. A shark hit us, and that music when that—it's one of my favorite cues. It's very intense. She does a really good job of acting, and Dusenberry, I believe her name is. So. Oh yes, uh huh. She did. So, she did yeah. an excellent job. Yeah, right here when she's realizing that's just so intense. Yes, it is intense. It's a hard scene. It's hard to be so immersion- emotional because it drains you. By the time you finish well, work at night, you're just so tired. It drains you. It's it's worse than than running for miles and miles. You know what I'm saying? The emotional aspect of it. Oh yeah. And the this guy that um, gets attacked and they, they drags him to the boat. Yes. But it's so effective to have him tear the boat a piece of the boat off as the shark pulls him under. That is intense. Yeah. Yes. Very well done. It's very well thought about and very well done. Scary as heck, because it could be so like, real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, I wonder if they had him on that same track that the shark phone, phone was on, because he just cut straight through the water to the boat there. I guess you wouldn't oh, know. Oh, probably, but, probably. I bet that's how they did it. I bet they used that they, wire. Maybe yeah, they used know. the same apparatus. I'm I'm sure they did, yeah. Wow. That's All it is is cables and stuff, you know. That was, that was an intense scene there. I mean, Jaws 2 is underrated as far as... I mean, it's, it's, it's appreciated and it's got its falling, but it, it really... I don't think it gets the appreciation it deserves. Um, I mean, the first film obviously is just so iconic and great, but uh, oh yeah, but this is right on its heels as far as I'm concerned. I even I even have friends 
one of the guys that did the Shark is Still Working documentary with, his first movie that he saw, first Jaws movie he saw was Jaws 2. And oh. he, would, he, would want to, he would want to talk about Jaws 2 as much as anything scared him to death. Wow. So, I know. You know, I, I get fan mail, and, and the, the, the people would write me saying they couldn't get in the bathtub for months. They were afraid of the water. <laughs> <laughs> so it affected that, that, people. It really did. That is bad. No, I, I have several letters saying the same thing. I, I wouldn't get in the bathtub. I was so afraid. I'm, I'm thinking that is that is a bit much. <laughs> I do get scared going out in the ocean sometimes. Do you ever get scared? Well, of course. Yeah. I mean, you, you're stupid if you're not. Because there's always that chance, you know what I'm saying? I watched a boat get smashed to bits by a whale just coming up and just flying over the top of it, smashed to pieces. So you never know, you know. You can tell us that story. (laughs) What? Where was that? Well, I'm sure you've seen them. I'm sure you've seen them. Like, uh, was it a killer whale or a... No, it was a big, big humpback whale, yeah. And I remember when I was working on uh, Airwolf, I would fly in that helicopter over the ocean in Malibu, and you could see the big, huge whales under the water traveling down south. It was awesome to see them. They're so huge. But to see them in the helicopter was unbelievable. I was lucky in a lot of ways. I remember Richard Dreyfus telling a story. It was on some talk show or, or, or someplace. And he said that he was out having dinner one night. He, he was talking about how people just always approach him and talk about Jaws. Hey, Jaws. They'll come up to him and say. And he said he was out having dinner one night, and, and, and some man came up and told him, you know, people say that, you know, what happens in Jaws couldn't happen, but it happened to me. And uh, I guess the. The way he told it was this man proceeded to tell him a story about a great white shark that basically tore up his boat and actually chased him to shore (laughs) and like totally uh and was a giant you know shark uh like in the films and just tore up his boat and and chased them for miles (laughs) and uh, i mean the way he told it was a little more scary but but man i mean just, just when you're out in the ocean and you know you can feel your, you feel that sand under your feet, and then when you get to that point where all of a sudden you're floating, yeah, and you just know what's under you. And if you made yeah. a Jaws, if you made a Jaws movie, you know, you know they're probably aware of this, uh, you know. So you better be careful going out there in the water. It's oh for sure, absolutely, absolutely. Those sharks don't know. Gene no. Coulter. That's Canadian Jaws, too. That's funny. I need to go to the beach. This movie's making me want to go to the beach. Oh, it's wonderful. Florida was wonderful on the beach and stuff, but there's a lot of nice places around the world. But there's always the sharks. And all these uh, the stunts with the uh, with these boats, these teenagers in these boats, that had to have been really hard to coordinate. Um, oh yeah, because you know when you're on the water and the wind, that makes it difficult to begin with, you know. But then when you put in all the boats and everything happening, I'm sure they had a time filming. And they shot in Martha's Vineyard, so um, it was cold up there, I'm sure. Yeah, Martha's Vineyard. They did a really great job. Navarra Beach. I mean, you can't really tell in a lot of shots where some some shots, it's like he's driving over a bridge and it's in uh, Martha's Vineyard. And when he comes off the bridge, it's in... Uh, Navarra Beach, Florida. <laughs> so, like, uh, let's see. For those uh, of you listening, let me take a moment and just share some of the uh, great films and shows that Gene's been involved with. And, uh, you know, if you want to know more about any of these, just leave us a comment or something. We can always do a show about it. But 
we'll see. Prior prior to Charlie's Angels, was there any, is there anything we should mention? I, oh, dirt, you were in a Dirty Harry, uh, a scene with Clint Eastwood, right? Yes, I think it was uh, Magnum Force. I remember I was working with Clint Eastwood, and he said to me, he says, you have good getaways. I said, what? He says, you know, getaways. I said, no, I don't know. He said, legs. I said, oh, okay, got it. (laughs) He was so fun to work with. What a nice, mellow man. What a talented, wonderful man he was. Loved working with him. Loved it. And then, uh, so you did you did that, and then you did you did some TV shows, uh, Emergency, right? Oh yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, I think I yeah. I jumped out of a house that was on fire or something. And then you uh, you met Elvis. Oh, did I meet Elvis? Yeah, my sister had dated Elvis as a publicity uh, thing, but I met Elvis. I was working on clam bake, and I had to dance up on a building that just had a two-by-six board up on top of the roof, and I had to get up on that and dance in a bikini. And I met Elvis, and I had so much fun. He sang to me and danced with me during the breaks, and he was just so nice. He would call me ma'am. And we had so much fun. That was on Clam Bake. That was when I was a kid. That was it was fun though. But dancing on a roof with a two by six and that was it. It was scary. <laughs> and Elvis helped me down each time. It was really cute. Now, I always thought this was a good um, sequence with the shark attack, attacking the the teenagers here. Give Jaws to a, a moment here. <laughs> now this young guy, this guy Keith uh, Keith Gordon, he he went on to be a big. He's done a lot of great, you know, directing and acting. Uh, I don't know if you have, if you haven't seen Halloween, you probably haven't seen Christine. Uh, no. Uh, John Carpenter's Christine. He had the lead role in that. Was in some pretty pretty big movies back in the day. Back to school. Oh, how great. How great. But, yeah, I mean, a lot of these uh, boat stunts, you know, you've got the actual actors on them, and the boats turning up and down. I mean, was there, like, a stunt supervisor or somebody like that? Yes, uh-huh. Yeah, Teddy Grossman was the stunt coordinator on it. So um, he would probably have stunt doubles for the kids, although the kids were probably hired because they had the ability of being on those sailboats. So I'm sure that, you know, they did most of the work themselves, but they always have stunt people there because they don't want their actors hurt because they can't work, you know. So um, I'm sure he had doubles there for them. I know Teddy Grossman was friends with Scheider. Because um, I think they they worked together on on the first movie. Uh, Teddy Grossman was the estuary attack victim, uh, the guy who gets his leg bit off. <laughs> right. Yes. 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 How can you forget that? <laughs> yeah, he he no. was a fun guy too. Teddy Grossman was so much fun. Although awesome. he really wasn't out with me when I did my scenes. Because nobody could be out there, so and my scenes were pretty simple. There wasn't much to tell me or to do, so you know now, I didn't get to work with him that much. This this here is just such a great sequence uh, with the with the sharks just like basically sliding on the side of the boat as they 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 they, they pull uh, Mike Brody out of the sharks way and the sharks just coming around in i mean this is just so well done and uh you know people complain about the you can see some of the mechanics in the shark's mouth and i'm just like are you kidding me i mean I, I don't really think people wow really they're looking that, okay. uh, <laughs> well i don't think people realize that when these movies came out i mean this was before digital this is before you know I mean, you can barely see it. I mean, you have to have, like, your contrast really up to see this little bar inside the shark's mouth. But I'm like, this is such an incredible scene. And, and, and uh-huh. I mean, to, to, I don't know how they did that. Um, they, it really looks like, 
you know, somebody was going to get hit by that shark. But uh, um, do you do you recall anybody getting hurt on Jaws too, other than you? No. No. Um, <laughs> wasn't there like? Didn't you say something? We we were talking one time and. Oh, Christine got bit by all the uh, jellyfish. She landed in in a whole thousands and thousands of them jellyfish, and she got stung all over, and she passed out. And I'm out in the middle of the ocean with her in the boat. I pull her, and and I ha- I slapped her a little bit. I said, Christine, wake up! Don't go to sleep. She had been stung so many times; it was terrible. So we got back to shore, and they put on meat tenderizer and stuff to stop it. But it was pretty bad. She was really stung bad. I couldn't believe how many thousands of jellyfish there were when she landed in them, right in the middle of them. That was terrible. (laughs) That was terrible. Have you ever been stung by a jellyfish? Yes, of course. (laughs) It's like like they, they figure out, oh, okay. (laughs) <laughs> like one of them bites you, and the next thing you know, you got ten of them. It's oh, welts oh. all over the place. Yep, they're so darn painful too. And one one kid in Florida told me just use meat tenderizer. So that's what I used to use when I get bit by them. But that sting, oh. you, you don't forget. Uh uh-uh. oh. So I'm I'm sitting here and I'm realizing. There's got there are people out here going, gee, if if I was doing a commentary with Gene Coulter, <laughs> John, too, I would be talking about something off the. Let's see if uh, now now have okay. Have you seen any of the other Jaws movies other than Jaws and Jaws Two? Did you see Jaws Three and Jaws the Revenge? No, I haven't. I haven't. Have you heard about those movies? Do you know anything about uh, them? Yes. I, I've heard some negative things about them, but I haven't heard well, some really great things about them. Well, are they exciting? I mean, are they worth seeing? If you Did like you in- mechanical sharks, <laughs> oh, <laughs> not really. Watch. I mean, it just depends. I mean, obviously, the first movie is just. Excellently crafted. Um, yeah. Jaws 2 is just a perfect, I think it's a perfect sequel. There's more sparklies there. I'll never forget that sparkly. <laughs> the sparklies, yeah. You know, um, and the sparklies. But these are, the, the Jaws 2 is just a perfect, you know, summer movie, popcorn film. Um, yeah. Jaws 3D takes place, do you know the premise? Jaws 3D takes place at SeaWorld. Oh, okay. And, uh, a shark. I, I think the premise to Jaws 3D is really, really interesting. A shark breaks into Sea World, and um, you know they have to contend with that. And uh, so they're obviously trying to do something different. Um, and I think uh, Joe Alves was just under a lot of pressure from the producers and whatnot. And they made it in 3D before you could really easily do 3D. Oh, and, uh, okay. I think, That's I think a good a idea. Part- I think it was a hard shoot, but uh, boy, I tell you what, when I was like 10 years old and I saw Jaws 3D in the theater, <laughs> I was grinning ear to ear. Wow, so that's awesome. To see a Jaws movie. Well, and, that's uh, good Jaws, to hear. Jaws 3D has, uh, you know, had a good cast. Dennis Quaid. Um, oh, Dr. he is. Here. Oh, Beth excellent. Armstrong, Leah Thompson, famous from Back to the Future. Uh-huh. Uh, funny enough, you know, in Back to the Future, Leah Thompson plays Michael J. Fox's mother. Her name is Lorraine. And guess <laughs> who Lorraine that was named that? That was Sid Scheinberg flexing his muscle. He, he had uh, them name that character after Lorraine Gary. Oh, his how wife. cute. That was so, cute. Well, oh, that's funny. kind of a neat story, yeah. That's cute. Obviously, uh, he's crazy about her. 
Jaws the Revenge is just kind of just Twilight Zone. I don't know what was going on, but I don't know. When I was a kid, I loved it. I just when I was when I was a kid, I just oh, that's special. Loved watching these Jaws movies. So they're always fun to revisit and uh, kind of uh-huh. takes you back. Do, do you have anything that like just kind of takes you back to when you're a kid? And, you know, everything was fun and. You, I don't know. I, I like the I like the fifties and sixties. I love the cruising in the cars that we used to do at Bob's Big Boy Restaurant, and I <laughs> like the music, the Elvis Presley things, and I liked all that. You know, that was really cool. Then we had a good time. Then those were different years, of course, but uh, they were fun years. They were hard years because we worked hard as kids, but. Um, and my sister was in the movies at the time, and it was hard for all of us other three children that weren't really. So uh, she got all the attention and traveled all over the world, and, and we were left at home. and <laughs> so We had to go to school and do the chores. and But, no, the 50s and 60s were special for me, you know. And then I grew up, and it wasn't so special anymore. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I was lucky I did the job I did. I was lucky to have that. I'm very grateful for that, you know, because it was and, different. And I don't like and, working in an office, so for me it was great. <laughs> and I'm grateful for movies that have sharks attacking helicopters and dragging <laughs> yeah, that them. Was fun. Come on, how cool <laughs> is that? Look at that. Yeah, who would think of that? Oh, a lot of I thought put draw, into like, some I, of this. I used to draw pictures of this, and like they actually cut like a scene out, like when the helicopter flips over. There's actually um, I don't know if you know anything about it, but they 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 flip the helicopter over, and then like the shark attacks the guy in the bubble of the helicopter, kind of like uh, Hooper in the shark cage, and uh, oh, cool. it shows up sometimes on on TV versions. But I uh, always thought that was unfortunate that it was cut out because it's kind of cool. Oh, that is that sounds cool. Uh, that had to have been a well, fun stunt. So. They can always add it back in, you know. It, it's popular every year in the summertime because that's when I get all my fan mails in the summertime. <laughs> so they're playing Jaws 2 all along. It's funny. Every year. I, some, one of the writers said to me, he said, you know, long after you pass, he says, they'll be watching your scene. I, I said, oh, my God. I never thought of that. <laughs> but it's true. Long after I pass. <laughs> That's something. I, Movies are I, great, I, aren't they? <laughs> they are. I know... Um, Woody Allen's not the most popular uh, guy these days, but I remember he had a quote that said he wanted somebody told him he achieve immortality, you know, through his films, and he said, "I'd rather uh-huh. achieve immortality by never dying." <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, that doesn't oh, work uh, somehow. <laughs> March, March uh, just got swallowed whole here. That I don't know how they filmed that, but, but that just so perfectly executed. Did you see that? The way you just. It, it, he came up, and I know I was talking about Woody Allen. I, I'm sorry. I folks, think it's cut. About... I think it's <laughs> cut. You know what I'm saying? You can you can oh, yeah. get a lot done in cuts. Just tell, yeah, or or maybe a forced perspective. I think they did forced perspective on that. It just totally looks like he just gobbled her whole. Or I think what they did is they actually pulled her under the boat as the shark came up, and it just was uh-huh. perfect. He's just being swallowed. Oh, um, God, that, that just scared me to death when I was a kid. <laughs> I, don't know, I, I know fans love that uh, scene as well. Yeah. But, uh, there's Roy out here again, all all by himself in his boat. <laughs> he was so perfect for that. So perfect. And did you get the, did you talk to him at all, or do you remember any? Oh, yeah, of Down course. Down? No, I worked, I don't know, we were at the hotel and stuff, and we always would talk, so yeah, I got to talk to him a lot. 
Do you recall um, anything in particular you guys discussed, or you you, not were you really? Talking we shop did shop about the movie. No, not really. <laughs> you don't talk about it work when you're at work. <laughs> you talk about something else like the beach and getting a tan, or you know the boat that sank in front of the hotel, or. I know there's always things to talk about other than working. So that that's, you know, that's what we do. So, yeah, I just talked to him about everything, really. He was a nice man, did a lot of neat things, was a, a great actor on so many shows, you know, so. Uh, I, I try to get folks on my channel to realize he's been in other great movies, you know, because, like, everybody's just always Jaws, Jaws, and I think, Oh, Even yeah, you, all that jazz. Oh, yeah, I mean, come on. That's like, yeah, that's like one of the exactly. best movies. And it's uh, it's not really a musical, uh, you know. If you don't like the idea of a musical, I mean, it's not really a, a musical. It's so much more than that. Right. Uh, he was nominated for an Academy Award. Yeah, he should have got it. Yeah, he should have. He was and good. Then, uh, did you watch that car chase I sent you? Of the seven no. up? You... No. The... Uh... I didn't get it. No. I'm going to have to send you the, the seven ups car chase. That's one of the oh, people go on please. about Bullet. You know, Steve McQueen and Bullet. But the same right. people that made Bullet produced a movie he was in called The Seven Ups. Uh huh. You talk about one of the best car chases ever. It's, really? You, oh, I'd love to about see it. it. Got about a ten, fifteen minute long car chase through New oh, York awesome. over the Brooklyn Bridge. Oh and my gosh. Really exciting. I'd and love I'd to just, see that. I'd see Roy and Jaws and then I'd be like, Well, like what else has this guy been in? And um then I'd get like the French connection and then I'd get the seven ups and I'd get Blue Thunder and Oh, and good movie. movie. Yeah, great and movie. So, I just interviewed, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of a movie called The Hitcher. His name's Eric Redd. And uh, he wrote a movie called The Hitcher that was real popular in the 80s and a bunch of other great films, Near Dark. And um, But anyway, he made a movie with Roy Scheider called Cohen and Tate that not a lot of people have seen. People I've shown it to, like, really love it. But uh didn't get to distributed well and whatnot. But uh uh -huh. I just did a documentary on that. He he gets he Eric Red like talks in depth about Roy Scheider and how he works and how he would make up a uh, a backstory for his character that wasn't even in the script just to really get the the details of his character worked out. Uh huh. Just talk about a lot of well. actors do that. A lot of actors do problem. that. I, I like that. Maybe Chief Brody's backstory was uh, the French Connection. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great movie, wasn't it? That was a great movie. Oh, I love yeah. watching that. Love that. I, I like the exciting movies, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like Jaws 2. I like the ones that you think people are killed in, but they're not. <laughs> that kind of stunt work. I like that. My uh, friend Dar have... Robinson, who was a famous guy that did the high falls in the movie business, he was the best oh, he... there were. He died doing a simple stunt at the end of the show when his, his bike just slid off the edge of a cliff and he was impelled on a tree. But it was so simple, and here he did all these huge high falls off of buildings all over the world and never got hurt. And then he does one simple thing and is killed. He Crazy. did one stunt, and uh, he did one stunt, Dar Robinson. I know he yeah. was in Lethal Weapon. He was visible in a, a few stunts in Lethal Weapon. That was probably right around before he passed. Uh, uh -huh. But... Uh, he did a stunt in a Burt Reynolds movie. I, I, I can't remember if it was Sharky's Machine. It was Sharky's or... Machine. And he called okay. me when he was doing it. He was up in the tower. And he calls me up and he says, I'm getting ready to go out backwards. 
And he said, and I'm a little bit scared. I said, oh, God. I said, you have that handled. And we were laughing, and he was so much fun. He lived life to the fullest, and he died so young. But he was so darn talented. And he would call me, and and we'd laugh about the stunt he was getting ready to do, and it was really cute. But uh, we were best of friends, and he was so talented. And now I see his two boys are running shows now. It's it's really neat. I saw them when they were little teeny kids, you know, and now they're running shows. But their dad was so talented. And to lose him on such a simple job when he thought he would be killed doing the high falls, you know. He told me, he said, I'm going to die doing this high fall because I used to live him on fire at 200 feet up in the air. And he'd jump into these airbags, and he'd be sweating and just really nervous. I said, oh, cool it. I said, you're going to steam in that that outfit you got on if you don't stop sweating. <laughs> and we'd laugh. And he said, I'm going to die doing one of these. I said, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> but it wasn't one of those that he died on. It was funny. One of the simplest things ever. So darn talented. Had it all figured out, too. You know, all those so high falls. Like just the uh, unexpected gust of wind or something? or Oh, yeah. yeah. The way he died, it was so ridiculous. It was the, the last scene. I don't know if it was the end of the movie or what was happening, but the guys told me that he just slid off the edge of the cliff in, in gravel in a motorcycle and got impelled on a tree and ruptured his liver, mm. and um, he died. They couldn't get him to the hospital in time or something. I guess it was the end of the show and they let have the ambulance leave or something and wasn't ready for anything else to happen. So some of the simplest things you can die on, you know, when you don't plan it, you don't even think about it. So we lost him, sadly. Yeah, maybe it was just the moment of concentration. I guess if you just... If you if you're not if if you just don't right. think you and make the move yeah. when you need to make the move. It's, yeah, it's just no, not really paying attention after it's the hard work's done. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Did you ever have a, a what was your closest call doing your stunts? I mean, you've done high falls. <laughs> you've, done, you've had long <laughs> oh. days to you. The one that uh, was the closest is when I was heading down Dublin Stockard Channing in a car, and there was a big, huge mirror. It was like a 10 feet by 10 foot put up in the middle of the road. So the car is going down into this mirror. I had the boards behind it all scored so that they would break. But when I hit it, one of the boards flipped around and went right through the windshield one inch from my face. Of course, I was all cut up and everything, but one inch from my face. If I'd have moved over one inch, it would have gone through my face. I would have been dead. That's how close that was. Something you would never think of. I thought I had it all planned out, but no. (laughs) So I skated on that one for sure. But a lot of them, you know, a lot of things you do you don't go as perfectly planned. Uh, here's Jaws causing trouble again. Um, oh, eating somebody as we, as, we, as we move towards the finale, um, Roy's crashing his, his, his boat. Uh, it's kind of cool. He uh, gets up here hanging on a wire. It's really him kind of doing some of his own stunt work there. Uh-huh. And, uh, I guess it was Teddy he Grossman who was abnormal. double. Yes. Uh, uh-huh. Teddy Grossman doubled him otherwise. Yes. And and this apparently Jaws 2 was like uh, one of the most expensive movies ever made, if not the. I know there was a big budget King Kong movie before it that was about twenty four million dollars and I've I've seen where Jaws two was twenty five million dollars to make in oh, wow. nineteen seventy dollars that was rumored to be the most uh, high you know biggest budget uh film at the time. But 
the well, you know, when you junction. work on water, it's hard. It, you have to really double everything because it takes so much time. The water could be too choppy and you can't shoot. There's a storm. Water is really hard to work in, really. So I understand big budget. And then the um, this cable junction set it was apparently just a big, you know, plastic uh, made to look like a... I guess a, a mound of charcoal, is that what it, it is? Or something, just a big big rock out in the ocean where this uh this electrical wire uh right uh, connects to. So it's like I the underground table. <laughs> making all this stuff and, and just going out in the middle of the ocean and filming all this had to have been quite a bit of of work. A lot of right. hours on <laughs> Remember, it gets choppy out there, and you can't shoot because everything's shaking so bad. So that holds you up a lot. You know what I'm saying? Working in the yeah. water, it's very difficult. But they really uh, used the shark a lot in this movie. I'm just just watching it. There are all these scenes. Um, they didn't hold back on the shark scenes in, in Jaws too. Yeah, they finally kind of, figured it out where they the jaw the original jaws they had such a hard time with the shark everything was going wrong but by jaws 2 they had it all figured out. So it worked pretty smoothly really. The shark didn't break down or you know not for my scenes anyway, but uh they had it all figured out by the time jaws 2 came around so that was good, you know. So there was like a boat that was kind of off from where the shark was, and they would just pump water into it. It was hy hydraulically. Do you, do you recall uh -huh. how they were making this thing work? I don't. It's like you said, though. It's all hydraulic, and they had cables underwater, and they had wheels on it. I remember. Um, and in Florida, you could shoot in the shallow water and, and use it, you know, on a wheel, I guess. But I'm really not sure because at night they they'd pull the shark in, so I didn't see what they were doing with it. But the only thing I saw was when they put the fin in in the water with the cables to do that major shot with the sparklies, you know, with me yeah. in the boat and and then pulling the uh, skier, and then the fin comes up. And that's pretty yeah. good because they had to be quite a distance away from even the fin, pulling the fin. They had to be quite a distance away because it was a wide shot, and they wanted to get the boat and me and Christy and in the fin. So that was quite quite a deal to to do that, you know. You know, you know what, what's also kind of cool about Jaws too that. You know, I don't know if you realize this, but you know, every time this shark's popped up after meeting you, it's got half of its face burned off. That's yeah, that work. was the story. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty bad. I got to right? shoot the shark. <laughs> you did. Yeah. <laughs> you messed them I up. I may not good, be able to shoot a real gun, but I shoot those good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that I was funny, that. wasn't it? Well, uh, yeah, that's cool. Guard the shark for life. I mean, you at least got your, you know, you got got some blows in, you know. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Before it, it got me. <laughs> I can't believe it didn't look scary. It had to look a little scary. Come on. Um, you know, when you're close up to it, movie. seeing it, it didn't. Honest to goodness, it didn't. But once I saw it on film, it scared the hell out of me. It was scary. It was. Were you sitting? It, were you? Were you just like standing there going, "This is just wild. Look at where I'm at." You know, it had to be. Of course, totally of thrilled. course you do. Of course, it's all pretend, though. You know, it's all fun. <laughs> so when you're standing in that boat and that shark's coming at you. <laughs> yeah, I love this uh, this finale sequence here with the with the wire and these. I mean oh, the. Yeah. Um, I mean, Roy, Roy's like totally uh, 
unbelievable here. Gosh, I hope my phone will make it to the end of the movie. We're almost there, Gene. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I know. Maybe again. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I hope folks enjoy this. But but come on, it's a great finale. Don't, don't you just love how they they do away with the shark in this? Uh, with the, yeah, with the it was pretty good. Pretty, pretty good, good to idea. Think of that, huh? Good idea for good sure. Idea. Yeah, I, that's funny. I, I read somewhere, it might have been in uh, Michael Smith and Luke Pisano's book, uh, The Making of Jaws 2, but uh, uh, I think they, they actually originally were going to kill the shark with some uh, engines of a of like a motorboat, like, and they just dug the oh. propellers into the shark or something. Oh, but, uh, okay. I, uh, lots of oh, this is better. <laughs> They are the Indian, good. Roy's so good in that. I just uh, a shot. He sells it for sure. But he wasn't into the. He wasn't into being a celebrity. You know, he was just kind of into making no. his movie. That's right. He was a real professional. He really loved the art of of making a movie. He really did. Well, fish for dinner. <laughs> Charcoal. <laughs> Probably didn't smell very good. Oh gosh, no. I remember I remember just watching that in the movies and just I mean that just I could have sat in the movie theater all day. And there's actually I don't know if you've heard this, but there's actually recordings. People tape recorders into the movies back in 1978. And uh-huh. some, uh, I think I sent you one, didn't I? I texted it to you. So you got to listen. Did you listen to that? Were they really Right. Or? I did. I did. Yeah, it was interesting. Really. I mean, how fun they is that? They were scared. Yeah, that was incredible. That was incredible. I mean, these movies um, and Jaws, Jaws 2, I mean, it delivered the goods. People had a good time. Yeah, they did. They got they got scared. <laughs> they did. Yeah, that adrenaline rush. <laughs> well, um, always feels good. <laughs> and then you've, uh, as we wrap up here, as the end credits begin. Um, I know we were going to talk about more movies that you're involved with. Cujo, you had Dogs, Jason. Oh, Pepper, yeah. You had, oh, yes. You had Cujo. Uh, <laughs> Blues Brothers doing the car chases in the mall and stuff. So. Yeah, that was great. What an uh, experience that was. A View to a Kill. You're in that sense that everybody remembers where you, you sit up after the fire truck hits the top of your trailer. You up, uh, <laughs> right. Everybody huh. remembers that. You doubled for uh, Tanya Roberts in that too and had that scene with uh, Roger Moore where you flip yeah. him over. So yeah. all those stories all those stories can be heard in your interview, which again is on, on my channel. It's called A Conversation with Gene Coulter. Uh, stunt legend Gene Coulter, I think I put in the title. Oh thanks, you- Michael. That's and, uh, sweet. I know, I know we didn't uh, give the play-by-play on the movie, but I hope everybody's enjoyed uh, hearing Gene's stories and just hearing how pleasant Gene is. And um, and I hope everybody uh, continues to celebrate Jaws too and Gene's work. And again, just uh, leave us a comment. Uh, Gene, any following? Any uh, final thoughts? Uh, anything you'd like to share with folks? No, just keep going to the movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, makes you know, life keep, fun. <laughs> keep going to the movies. Well, uh, you know, my channel is your channel, but uh, oh, you're so you sweet. come on any time and oh, you know, got thanks, Michael. Aspect. Well, you're welcome. I truly yeah. enjoyed it. I really did. It's fun. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, and um. I thank everybody for listening. I hope this was fun, and uh, we'll see you next time. Everybody take it easy. (laughs)
Bye, Michael. Bye. Thank you, hon. Bye, hon. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for being a good sport. <laughs> you made it happen. Ha, <laughs> ha,